In this video, we're going to talk about how to write net ionic equations. So let's start with this example. Let's say if we have aqueous sodium iodide mixed with aqueous lead nitrate. How can we write the net ionic equation for this example? So what we're going to do is we're going to predict the products and then we're going to balance the equation and we're going to write the total ionic equation and also the net ionic equation. So let's begin. How can we predict the products of this reaction? So we need to recognize that this is a double replacement reaction. Sodium is going to pair up with nitrate and the iodide ion will pair up with the lead ion. Sodium has a plus one charge as an ion and nitrate has a minus one charge. So when these two get together they will combine in a one-to-one -one ratio because the magnitude of the charges are the same even though the signs are different. So they will combine to form sodium nitrate. Now we need to discuss the solubility of this compound. So you need to be familiar with the solubility rules. Nitrates are always soluble and the group one alkali metals like sodium, lithium, potassium, they're always soluble. So we're going to write AQ because they're soluble. Now, to get the other product, we need to pair up lead and iodide. Now, lead has a 2 plus charge. How do we know that? The reason why it has a 2 plus charge and not a 4 plus charge is because there's two nitrates attached to it. And each nitrate has a minus 1 charge. So two nitrates will have a total charge of minus 2. And we only have one lead ion to counteract that negative 2 charge. So that's why it has a 2 plus charge. Iodide has a minus 1 charge. Now if we use the crisscross method, it's going to be PB1I2. Basically, take the numbers and replace them with subscripts. So this is lead to iodide. Now, is this compound soluble or insoluble? According to the solubility rules, the halides like chlorides, bromides, and iodides they're insoluble with compounds such as silver, lead, and mercury. Everything else they're soluble with. So because this particular compound is insoluble, we need to put S because it's going to form a solid. Now this particular reaction has a special name. Whenever you mix two aqueous solutions and if you get a solid product as a result, that reaction is called a precipitation reaction. Lead iodide precipitates as a solid out of the solution. So now we have our molecular equation, but now what we need to do is we need to balance this molecular equation. So on the left side, we have sodium, iodide, lead, and nitrate. And let's write those ions on the right side as well. Currently, we have one sodium ion on both sides of the equation. On the left side, we have one iodide ion. On the right side, we have two. And on each side, we have one lead ion excuse me, lead ion. And on the left side, we have two nitrate ions. On the right side, we have one. So let's begin by balancing the number of nitrate ions. So what I'm going to do is put a 2 in front of NaNO3. So this number will become a 2. But now I have two sodium ions. So what I need to do is put a 2 in front of sodium iodide. So these two numbers will become a 2. And now everything is balanced. I have two sodium ions on both sides, two iodide ions, one lead ion, and finally two nitrate ions. So I have a complete balanced molecular equation. Now the next thing that I need to do is convert the molecular equation into the total ionic equation. 
In this step, everything that it is in the aqueous phase needs to be separated into ions. Everything else, such as the stuff that's in the solid phase, or a liquid phase, or a gas phase, you need to leave it the way it is. So sodium iodide, we're going to split it into two sodium ions and two iodide ions. Now, of course, you can write AQ for each one of these, but because I'm running out of space, I'm going to leave it to you to write it. Now, lead nitrate, we can split it into one lead 2 plus ion and two nitrate ions. On the right side, we could split NaNO3 into two Na plus and two nitrate ions. Now, the solid product, we're going to leave it the way it is. So this is the only thing in a solid phase. All the ions that you see here, they're in the aqueous phase. Now, the next step is to eliminate the spectator ions. The spectator ions are those ions that look exactly the same on both sides. So which ions look exactly the same on both sides? So we have the nitrate ion and also the sodium ion. Now, one thing I do want to mention before we move on is that this reaction, that is before we cancel the spectator ions, that represents the total ionic equation, or you could say the complete ionic equation. Now, once you remove the spectator ions, what you have left over is known as the net ionic equation. So I'm going to write the phases for this. So this is in a solid phase, and the ions are in the aqueous phase. So that's how you can write the net ionic equation for a problem like this. Now let's work on another example for the sake of practice. So we're going to mix aqueous potassium phosphate with magnesium chloride. So aqueous simply means that it's dissolved in water. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem. So the first thing we need to do is that we need to predict the products of the reaction. So let's pair up the first ion and the last ion. Potassium has a plus one charge. It's an alkali metal in group one. Chloride is a halogen with a negative two, one charge. Because the magnitude of the charges are the same, they will combine in a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, what is the solubility of this compound? Potassium chloride. Is it soluble or insoluble? As we said before, group one metals like sodium, potassium, lithium, they're always soluble. So we're going to write AQ for this one. Now for the other product, we need to combine the phosphate ion and the magnesium ion. Now you should always write the ions with the positive charge first. And then you should write the ions with the negative charge second. So using the crisscross method, we're going to replace the charges with subscripts. So the 3 will become the subscript for Mg, and the 2 will become the subscript for PO4. Whenever you have multiple polyatomic ions, you need to enclose it in a set of parentheses. So now let's write this product. Now, is this compound soluble or insoluble? Magnesium phosphate, what would you say? Phosphates are generally insoluble, except for the most part with group 1 metals. So magnesium phosphate is definitely insoluble. So that's it for the first step. This is the molecular equation, but now we need to balance it. So let's do it mentally. The polyatomic ions with the highest charge is the ones that I like to balance first. Phosphate has a very high negative charge, negative 3, so I'm going to begin by balancing that. Notice that there's two phosphates on the right side, so I need to put a 2 in front of K3PO4. 
Now, notice that I have six potassium ions on the left. So I need a six in front of KCl, which gives me six chloride ions on the right side. I have a two in front of, well, I have two chlorine atoms on the left side, so I need to put a three in front of Mg. So now I have six chloride ions on both sides. Three times two is six. Now notice that I have three magnesium ions on both sides. So everything is balanced at this point. If there's no number here, you can put a one or you could just leave it blank. Now our next step is to write the total ionic equation. So remember, everything that's in the aqueous phase, we need to separate it into ions. So we have two times three or six potassium ions. And then we have two PO4 ions, each with a negative three charge. On the left side, we have three magnesium ions. And we have three times two or six chloride ions on the left side. Now on the right side, we also have six potassium ions and six chloride ions in the six KCl molecules. And this is a solid, so we're not going to decompose it into ions. So this right here is the total ionic equation. And keep in mind, everything else that is, all the other ions are in the aqueous phase. So that's it for the total ionic equation. Now the last step is to eliminate the spectated ions. The spectated ions are the potassium ions and also the chloride ions. They appear exactly the same on both sides of the equation. So what we have left over will give us the net ionic equation. So we have two phosphate ions in the aqueous phase, which will react with three magnesium ions also an aqueous phase to produce the solid product magnesium phosphate. So this is another precipitation reaction. And that's basically it. So now you know the steps that you need to take in order to write the net ionic equation for a double replacement reaction.